Hey, welcome back to Tuesday Afternoon. Hi everybody, let's make a dog ornament. And with these easy steps, you can make it for yourself. I want this to be a larger ornament, and I pretty much know I want it the size of the palm of my hand. First, I start with a flat disc of aluminum foil, roughly two inches across. I use regular Reynolds wrap. I personally don't use heavy duty. It is too hard on my hands. This will be the inside of your ornament and will also aid in making your ornament not too heavy. The polymer clay I like to use is original Sculpty, and you can find it at Amazon, Walmart, and most craft stores. Prepare your polymer clay by kneading it. I like to roll out my polymer clay and then wrap it around my aluminum foil rather than placing it directly. Do whatever is easier for you. The side that you intend on making into the face should be a little bit thicker than the other side. I try to make this so you can follow along without the sound on and know what you are doing. So feel free to turn the sound off if you don't want to hear me talk. I don't know if anybody else likes to use them, but I use glass gems, usually used for aquariums and vase fillers for my eyes. Once I'm happy with the position of the eyes, I usually turn them over so the round side is facing down and push them into the head. To make this little guy's eyebrows, I merely stick my finger into the clay and push upward. I always lose my fingernail polish. I knew this was going to happen. To make sure that the eye sit in correctly, I push the gem back in with the flat side facing down. And then I shape the brow. You want your brow rounded. I like to have the lower brow hang just a little bit over the eye to give him a sad look. I'm trying to capture that same look that my dog Odie gives me when he wants a treat. <laughs> Oh, those eyes. <sighs> and you'll just repeat the process for the other eye. Also make sure the space between the actual eye and the brow is smooth. It's too narrow of a space to sand after it's done baking. Learn from my mistakes and benefit from them. <laughs> I wasn't happy with the brow line, so I'm just repairing it here. Needed a little bit more definition. That's better. Okay, it's good. Here, I'm just making sure the space between the eyes matches the illustration. As you can tell, you don't need a lot of tools to make this ornament. And if you keep watching my videos, you'll notice my favorite tool is actually my own hands. I want the sides of this ornament to be round. Alright, so this pretty much looks good. Now we'll move on to the cheeks. Knead the clay just a little bit to prepare it. Then pull the desired amount. Roll it around between the tips of your fingers. There's one cheek. Set his cheeks on his face to make sure it's the correct size and make any adjustments that you might need. Just place the cheeks on where you would like them. Next, we're going to make the nose. I didn't show it, but I just pulled off a small piece of clay and just gently pushed it into place. You can also use a toothpick to make these nose holes and the line between the cheeks.
Okay, it's time for the jaw. I gently place the jaw onto the ornament, and then I smooth the clay out. Really, at this point, it could be either a cat or a dog. Now, let's do the ears! Again, you'll need to knead some clay, and then roll it out. Here is the thickness you will need. I'll be using an exacto knife to cut out the shape of the ears. Since I don't have a pattern, I'm just going to cut out the general shape. Once I have that cut out, I'm just going to turn it over and cut out around the first ear. Like so. Okay, if you don't have a screw eyelet at home, this is how you can make a homemade one. You'll be using this for the reinforcement part of the ornament where it hangs from. Don't want it to break, and this will keep it from happening. Okay, now we're going to make the hole in the top of the head where the eyelet goes in, or your homemade one. Don't make the hole too large. You want something for the eyelet to grab onto. When screwing it in, you want to feel a little bit of resistance. Well, a lot of resistance. Looks good. And now you're just going to add clay around it and inside of the hole of the eyelet. Now hopefully you centered it, but later on I noticed that mine wasn't quite centered. So if this happens to you, you can just add some clay on to balance it out. Smooth it out and then use a tool to make a hole straight through. As you can tell, it's not quite centered. <laughs> oh well, I'll fix it later. All right, now we're going to start work on the ears. Smooth the edges. You don't want to have to do this later when they're actually on the head. Get that head ready because now we're going to be shaping the ears and making sure the placement is correct. Okay, I think that looks good. Let's fold the ear to make sure it sets the same way it does on a dog. You'll want to smooth over the fold so you can't actually see where it was. I'm actually going to remove the ear so I can smooth over the edges once again. Now I'm just carefully going to place the ear back on and smooth out the edges so it blends naturally into the head. And then lift the ear so you can smooth underneath. Hopefully this will help if after it's been baked and you drop it, the ear won't come off. Always reinforce when you can, especially if they are parts that you've attached. I'm so happy with how the ear turned out. I wasn't sure. And just repeat the steps that you just did. I slowed it down here because there's a rather large 
ear fold. And I want to show another way to do it. Rather than trying to bridge that large gap, you can always stick a piece of clay in and then smooth it out. Don't worry, any mistakes at this point are reversible. And nobody's perfect. I'm using this tool to give it some nice edges so later on when I paint it I can shadow these areas create some nice definition. Now I'm working on the fold at the top of the ear. I want the ears to appear like he's listening. Don't worry about the ear not being perfectly flat. Just make sure that the edges of the ear are rounded and it will give it a nice finish. I actually like the rises and falls in the ear and I'm going to leave them there. I think they leave an opportunity for me to shadow them later on. Hey, looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. Now it's time to bake. Your ornament will need to be placed on an oven proof glass or metal surface. I use a cookie sheet with a baking sheet underneath the ornament to make sure none of the metal rubs off onto the actual ornament. You always can sand it, but I prefer just to skip that step. Set the oven to 275. It will need to be in for about 29 minutes. Let it cool before you start painting. First, I'm just painting a light layer to make sure I like the color. Of course, this is going to take many layers, the lighter the paint is. I chose this color palette so it would be easier for you guys to be able to see what I was doing. I thought maybe you would like to know what paints I used. System 3 Raw Sienna, Apple Barrel Black, System 3 Flesh Tint, Apple Barrel White, Basic Burnt Umber, and, for the eyes, Folk Art Metallic in Gold. Now, let this layer dry. I like to lay a paper towel down underneath the ornament so I can swivel it around without having to touch it directly. Continue laying in your second layer and start moving into the darker shades. Okay, here comes the tricky part. Now I've had a lot of practice with this, and I do it often. But if you're a beginner, I might not recommend doing it the way I do it. Yes, we're getting ready to paint the eyes. And yes, they are glass. So if you are a beginner, I recommend putting down a layer of ultimate polyurethane crystal clear gloss finish first so you have something for your paint to grab onto and a much more forgiving surface. But only put it on the eyes. You don't want to get it on the actual clay if you intend on putting pastel on it later. It won't adhere. Let the polyurethane dry before you put on the paint. You need to put on about three layers of white paint onto the eyes, letting them dry in between. Please excuse my paint job. I'm pretty happy with the position of the camera, but it makes it awful difficult to paint. I might have to figure out another way to do this next time. But I guess you get an idea of how to paint it. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below and like and subscribe if you like my content. I'd always like to hear what you'd like to see me make next. You can follow me on Instagram at Just Tuesday Afternoon if you want a sneak peek 
of what I'm going to make next. Okay, now I'm laying in the darker raw sienna around the eyes. This will give him a sad look when he's completed. I'm also going to be adding in a layer of brown and black under the eyes as well, but you'll see that later. Sorry if the video jumps around a little bit here. I just wanted to make sure that I was painting it correctly. After you paint all the layers on the eyes, you'll need to add a layer of the polyurethane over the top. Okay, now we can start on the eyes. I put down a layer of thin brown burnt umber paint. Then I add a layer of raw sienna. And then I add a little bit of that folk art metallic gold paint. You didn't see it, but I let that layer dry. I then paint around the iris in burnt umber. Next, we're going to paint in pupil. Yes, there I go again, being messy. <laughs> and now we'll add in the shine marks on the eyes and on the nose. You want your white paint to be a little bit thin because you want to be able to see the iris through the paint. If the paint isn't thin enough, just take a little bit of water and wipe away the center part. There you go, a shine mark, glorious. And then just repeat the process on the other eye. Boop, a little shine mark on the nose. You don't have to add it, I just thought it was cute. Okay, you could stop here if you wanted to, but I thought it might be neat to show you how to do some pastel. You don't need an expensive brand of soft pastels. These can be found at Walmart, and they're the Simply brand. I like to use pastels to accentuate the crevices, but also it gives you an airbrush effect without having to know how to airbrush. 
I like to use a stiffer brush for soft pastel and clay. I also like to add pastel black directly onto the bottom part of the eye to give it that sad look. Isn't that cute? I just add a little bit of pastel around the eyes, the cheeks, his little nose. Add pastel right over the brow. Start out with the lighter pastel and then move dark. So brown to black. I didn't end up using very much gold or yellow, just mainly brown and black. At this point, you'll get a feeling of where the pastel needs to be. The pastel really changes the look. I like it. Now I'm adding a layer of brown pastel to the bottom of the eye. Okay, remember when I told you I didn't mind if there were crevices and little lumps on the top of the ear? This is why. It adds a wonderful effect when you add dry pastel around those areas. Okay, now it's time to add the finishing touches and any touch-ups of the pastel needed. I go over the brows a little bit and under the eyes. Okay, I think it's done. Now you need to add three layers of polyurethane over the top covering the pastel on the eyes. I also add it to the nose and the mouth to give it a wet appearance. Okay, so he turned out a little bit larger than the palm of my hand, but I really like it. And I must say, I had a lot of fun making it. Well, there you go, my first YouTube video. I hope I did all right, and I hope I covered everything. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comments section below. And also, I'd love to hear what you would like me to make next. Thank you so much for watching, and check it out again on Tuesday afternoon.